Are you serious? Are you serious? Folks, I, I really want you to understand something right now. There is some very powerful CMEs that are going to be hitting today and tomorrow, maybe even on into April 3rd. Uh, uh, first of all, there's been some solar flare activity, very powerful, but you don't even have to have a solar flare, according to BP Earthwatch, to actually have CMEs still be released from the sun. Uh, matter of fact, spaceweather.com is reporting uh, chance of storms. Listen to this. The first of three, the first of three or more CMEs are en route to the Earth. They're expected to arrive late in the day today, April the 1st. Uh, none of the incoming clouds is, is squarely Earth-directed. Thank God for that. Uh, the series of glancing blows, however will rattle Earth's magnetic field and probably spark auroras. The NOAA forecasters estimated a 60% chance of a polar geomagnetic storm by tomorrow, April 2nd. Um, and the impulsive solar flare scrambles radio signals also. Back on Saturday, uh, March 29th, 2014, the magnetic canopy of the sunspot AR-2017 erupted, producing a brief but intense X-1 solar flare, a flash of extreme UV radiation sent waves uh, of uh, <clears throat> rippling through the Earth's upper atmosphere and distur uh, disturbed the normal um, propagation of terrestrial radio transmissions. Now, radio engineer Stan Nelson of Roswell, New Mexico, was monitoring the um, waves when he seen that there had been an uh, extreme effect uh, that had taken place. There's also some other reports coming from the Dobbler shift uh, going on. But let me, matter of fact, let me just do this. Understanding that solar flares have been erupting, and that there's been a lot of activity on the sun, more than normal. We're supposed to be in a quiet time, but instead we seem to see an intensity. Today, you're going to feel one, two, three, in the next few days, major solar flares. Good news, it's not direct hit, but that glancing blow enough to create a geomagnetic storm. BP Earthwatch has uh, been tracking the progress of these and is, uh, he is predicting that somewhere around 8 p.m. Eastern today that these uh, the first of three CMEs should hit the Earth. There should be another one about 10 hours later or so, uh, early Wednesday morning, April 2nd. Matter of fact, let's uh, listen to a little bit of uh, uh, a report here by BP Earthwatch. Lift that we've seen before, just a wall of impact. But that starts the rise time on the west coast. Now, you've noticed it goes for 24 hours from this point. It's going to continue to rise from the first to the second. Now, again, this is universal time. That will be 5 p.m. west coast, April 1st, tomorrow. Which okay, is so today. we're going to rise for 24 hours, then peak, then a trough. Then 10 hours later... 6 a.m. on the East Coast, and that could create more of an East Coast impact, but that will be going throughout the day. We'll have to watch it. Now, he talks about an, M, an East Coast impact. He feels like there's going to be an East Coast impact early tomorrow morning, April 2nd. Uh, again, uh, it's going to affect probably some radio transmission in the airwaves, and a lot of times this affects our internet. I mean, you guys will see that, you'll notice that, but uh, it doesn't bother Sugar. She'll sleep through anything, a tornado, a hurricane, an earthquake, a CMA, a solar flare. She might even sleep through the coming of the Lord. Anyway, prepare yourself for what's going on, okay? Uh, nothing to panic over, but I just want to make you aware that we've got a lot of activity going on in the sun, which does affect the earth. If we get a direct hit from one of these big solar flares, it could be, uh, well, it could affect the, the uh, electronic, the electrical grids, uh, or it could affect some of our infrastructure. Good news is these are glancing blows, 
three of them, though, and uh, that could create a geomagnetic storm. And if that does, now that can affect the uh, infrastructure to some degree, but don't panic, just making you aware. Bible prophecy told us there'd be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And there was one other thing I noticed today, and if you don't mind, I'd like to read just one verse out of the, the book of Genesis in chapter 1. This morning when I did my daily devotion, I was reading Genesis chapter 1. That's all I was doing. But as I was reading, a verse jumped out at me. And it said right here in, in the creation, of course, Genesis chapter 1, God creates light and, and calls the light day and the night and the darkness he calls night. But look what the Lord said here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 13. He said, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Then he says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so he said right here in the very creation he already let us know that he was going to put uh, the, that the firmament there would be a division be, between the day and the night the light and the dark and let it be for signs what signs signs of the end times God was already thinking about even though it was the beginning of time. All right? Just saying. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning, the end, the first, and the last. I'll be right back with more current world events and how it relates to Bible prophecy in just a moment.